In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel, welcome and marhaba to another episode of this series Dimensions of Islamic Life where we discuss various aspects related to our life as a Muslim Inshallah the challenges that we face and together with that solution, Islamic solutions to those challenges to overcome them and lead a life that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah in today's episode we are going to discuss the beautiful biography of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And before we do that let's inshallah azza wa jal remind one another to recite salat and salam in the court of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in his Mubarak hadith that whoever recites salat upon me on the day of Friday I will intercede for him on the day of judgment Subhanallah, Subhanallah So let's recite together Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam Alhamdulillah, as our topic for today is to discuss the greatness of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala In this regard, there is a beautiful manqabat penned by none other than Hakimul Ummat Mufti Ahmad Yar Khanaimi rahmatullahi ta'ala Let's inshallah recite together. He says, Hamare Aqa, Hamare Mawla, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa. Hamare Aqa, Hamare Mawla, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa. Hamare Malja, Hamare Mawa. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Zamane bhar ne Zamane bhar me Bahut jassus Kiya wa lekin Mila na koi Imam tum sa Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Tumhaare क्यों करे जानुए अदब खम कि पेशवाया ने दीन माना इमाम आजम अबू हनीफा न क्यों करे नाज अहल सुन्नत कि तुम से चमका नसीबे उम्मत सिराजे उम्मत मिला हो तुम सा इमाम आजम अबू हनीफा कि जितने फुकहा मुहेदीसी है कि जितने फुकहा محدثی ہے تمہارے خرمن سے خوش اچھی ہے ہواستے سے کی ہے وسیلہ امام آزم ابو حنیفہ سراج تو ہے بغیر تیرے جو کوئی سمجھے حدیث و قرآن پھرے بھٹکتا نہ پائے رستا امام آزم ابو حنیفہ خبر لے اے دستگیر امت 
کہ سال کے بے خبر پیشیدا وہ تیرا ہو کر پھرے بھٹکتا امام اعظم ابو حنیفا سبحان اللہ صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وعلا علیہ وصحبہ اجمائن وسلم الحمدللہ سچ اے بیوٹی فل منقبت کمپوزد in the praise of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi and as the narration is that at the time where we mention and we remember the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the salaha the mercy of Allah azza wa jal descends subhanallah subhanallah may Allah azza wa jal keep us blessed by commemorating and remembering the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such as Sirajul Ummah امام اعظم ابو حنیفہ النعمان رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ سبحان اللہ اگریٹ تابعی وانشاءاللہ ویل لرن مو اباؤٹ ہیز نوبل پرسنالیٹی بٹ بیفور دیٹ لیٹس لسن ٹو اے بیوٹیفل کلام ان دا پریز آف دا بلاوڈ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ ول بی بیک آفٹر دا کلام صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم شب کی رونق زلفوں سے Oh, oh, oh. 
انگوشت کے ایک اشارے سے اللہ 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 جبریل آتا لیلتا اسرا جبریل آمی پیغام خدا لے کر آئے تھے شب اسرا میرا آج پہ ان کو بلوایا قربت کا شرف ان کو بخشا اللہ 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 محمد نا ہو سید نا فل زول نا بی جاتی تو محمد ہے اپنے آقا اس نام سے اپنی عز و بقا طوفان میں جب یہ نام لیا پھر ڈوبتوں کو ہے کنا ملا اللہ 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 صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ویلکم بیک ٹو یو ویورز الحمد للہ وی ور لسننگ ٹو دس بیوٹیفل کلام کمپوز ان دا پریز آف دا بلاوڈ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ان شاء اللہ عز و جل وی ناؤ ریٹرن ٹو اور ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن ٹوڈے اینڈ دیٹ از دا گریٹنیس آف امام اعظم ابو حنیفہ رحمۃ اللہ تعالی علیہ اٹ از مینشن دیٹ سیدنا داتا گنج بخش علی حجویری Hanafi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi had a deep attachment to Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Nu'man bin Thabit rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And he rahimahullah has related that during the journey to Syria, I visited the sacred tomb of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the blessed Mu'azzin of the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So his tomb he visited and he said there I slept and found myself in Makkah Mukarramah. Here I saw the greatest and the holiest Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the door of the tribe of Bani Shaiba, kindly holding an elderly man as a child is held in the hands, Subhanallah. Out of overwhelming love, I fell upon the feet of the beloved Prophet of Rahmah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was curious to know as to who this elderly man was. The noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew the state of my curiosity and due to this, Alhamdulillah, with his blessed knowledge of the unseen and his inner power, he said to me, this is Abu Hanifa 
and he is your Imam. Subhanallah. After relating this dream, Sayyidina Data Ganja Bakhsh rahmatullahi ta'ala has stated that I learned that Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala is regarded amongst those blessed personalities whose qualities are established like the established ruling of Sharia. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. That is why the one with the most graceful manners, the most revered and renowned Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed an immense attachment to Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, which leads to this conclusion that the way the noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is free from committing mistakes, in the same way, by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal and his beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullahu Ta'ala is also free from committing mistakes. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah. Such profound statement by Hazrat Data Ganja Bakhsh Hajwari Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu. Sallu ala al-Habib, Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina wa sallam. Subhanallah, as we have learned from this account that is mentioned by Sayyidina Data Ganja Bakhsh Hajwari Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he reveals that the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the knowledge of the unseen. And with his knowledge of the unseen, he knew about the knowledge of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. And he has mentioned in his beautiful hadith that law kana al-ilmu bithuraya la tanawalahu unasum min abna faras. That if ilm, knowledge, were hanging on the suraya, meaning the cluster of seven stars, some people from the descendants of Faras, Persia, would surely find it from there. Subhanallah, and this hadith can be found in Musnad Ahmad. Sayyidina Imam Ibn Hajar Makki rahimahullah ta'ala has stated that this sacred hadith refers to the blessed personality of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. And there is no doubt in this fact because none from the area of Faras could attain such a superior state like Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. Even the levels of the knowledge of his students were greatly advanced. We also have the evident miracle of noble Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he revealed the knowledge of the unseen and stated what was going to happen in the future. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Dear brothers, the fact is, Azhar min al-shams wa abyan min al-ams. This is an, a proverb used in Arabic language to say something that is very apparent. It means brighter than the sun and more believable than the past. That our beloved and blessed Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been bestowed with knowledge of the unseen by Allah Azza wa Jal. Sabse awla wa ala hamara nabi, sabse bala wa ala hamara nabi. It is for this reason that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam revealed the information about Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi overwhelming insight and eminence in knowledge. Even before the blessed birth of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, it has happened exactly as it was stated by the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the blessed Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah Ta'ala came into this world, the popularity of his blessed knowledge spread and illuminated all corners of the world. If we look the literal meaning of the blessed name of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala which is Nu'man, we discover absolute conformity of his blessed name with his grand personality. Yes. Shaykh islam Shihabuddin, Imam Ahmad ibn Hajar Haytami Makki Ashafi Rahimahullah Ta'ala has concluded that scholars have consensus over his name Nu'man. And a very pleasant and graceful thing in the blessed name of Imam Azam Rahmatullahi Ta'ala is that Nu'man refers to such blood which retains the structure of proper functioning of the human body. So the reason behind calling him by the name of Nu'man is that he Rahimahullah Ta'ala is a base and foundation of Islamic fiqh and jurisprudence. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam. Dear brothers, 
the name of Sayyidina Imam Azm Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala as we have just found out from this quotation is Nu'man. The name of his father is Sabit, Nu'man bin Sabit. And his kunya and patronym or appellation is Abu Hanifa and his title is Imam Azm. In Arabic you can say Al-Imam Al-Azm. He was born in the year 80 Hijri in the city of Kufa, a famous city in Iraq. And he passed away on the 2nd of Shaban al muazzam in the year 150 Hijri at the age of 70. And his blessed tomb is still situated in Baghdad. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. All four Imams of Fiqh, Jani, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala are righteous and their disciples of proper faith are brothers to one another. Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa's rank is the highest among all four Imams. One of the reasons for this is that he is the only Tabi'i among them. Tabi'i, the term Tabi'i refers to one who had met any Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning a companion of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while in the state of Iman and also passed away in the state of Iman. According to different narrations, Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah Ta'ala was privileged to meet a few blessed Sahaba, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Anhu Majma'een and has also listened to the blessed Ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly from some of the blessed Sahaba. Allahu Akbar. The Shair says, Hai Nu'man Ibn Thabit, Abu Hanifa hai unki kunniyat. Hai naam, Nu'man Ibn Thabit, Abu Hanifa hai unki kunniyat. Pukarta hai ye keh ke alam. Imam Azam, Abu Hanifa. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam. Sayyidina Abu Nu'aym. Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi has stated that regarding the physical appearance of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, it is mentioned that his blessed face, clothing and shoes etc. would always remain in good condition and he rahimahullah ta'ala would help everyone who visited him. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah was of medium height and he rahimahullah ta'ala would interact with people in a very dignified manner. And he, rahimahullah, would abundantly apply fragrance itr and he would also be recognized by his pleasant fragrance. Sayyidina Misar, rahimahullah ta'ala, has said that I came to the masjid of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, and noticed that after offering uh, Salatul Fajr, he, rahmatullah ta'ala, ali, continued delivering religious knowledge to the people throughout the day. And during this time, he only took breaks for Salah. And after Salatul Isha, he headed to his home. A short while later, he was dressed in simple clothing. He applied ether and with a luminous face came to the masjid with his fragrance filling the air and atmosphere. He performed Nafal Salah at a corner and continued in this state until the morning. Thereafter, he rahimahullah ta'ala returned home, wore something else, and after offering Salatul Fajr with Jama'at, his routine of preaching continued till Isha just like the previous day. And I thought that he rahimahullah would have been exhausted, so he would rest that night, but he followed the same routine the following night as well. Later, he spent the third day and night in the same way. I was profoundly influenced by this and decided to stay in his company throughout my life. Subhanallah. And so I stayed permanently in his masjid. Throughout my stay here, I always saw Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala observing fast during the day and he was never heedless of worship and nafl every night. However, he rahimahullah ta'ala would have a little rest before Salatul Zuhr. Kya baat hai Subhanallah. 
These are the awliyaullah. This is our great Imam, the Imam of millions of Hanafis throughout the world. You and my Imam, Subhanallah, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah Taala, the Imam of thousands of pious predecessors and the awliyaullah, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullah Taala, Ali. And his days and nights were like this. His days would be filled while in the state of Psalm and fasting, he would continue to preach Islam, teach people the knowledge of Islam, the sacred Sharia of Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And during the night, he would stand and perform nawafil until the morning. And it continued. It wasn't something that he did it only for one day. It was his habit. It was his habitual state. It was his second nature. Subhanallah. May Allah azza wa jal. Grant us tawfiq to follow into his footsteps and truly earn the title of being Hanafis inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal enable us and give us tawfiq to follow into the footsteps of our pious predecessors and earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Bijahi Nabi Lameen. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina wa sallam. Dear brothers, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala was also in the profession of trade to earn halal and permissible livelihood along with his teachings and learning. And he rahimahullah ta'ala would not only do business within the confines of Sharia doctrines and principles, but would also care for others and urge his colleagues to do the same. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Hafs ibn Abdul Rahman Ali Rahma used to trade with Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. And he once had some goods while sending it to Sayyidina Hafs. He said, O oh Hafs, such and such cloth bears some defect. Disclose this when you sell it. And Sayyidina Hafs rahimahullah forgot about the defect and sold it without even remembering who the customers were. When Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah came to know about this, he alayhi rahmah distributed the value of that whole stock as sadaqah and charity. Subhanallah. This was the level of his ascetism and piety. We just learned that when a business partner from Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala unintentionally, this wasn't done deliberately, but it was done unintentionally, sold defective goods, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah gave away its value in sadaqah, in charity. But alas, today defective goods are not sold unintentionally in our society, but are sold by cheating, concealing the defects of those goods and false oaths. Many of us, our moral and ethical values have stumbled into the depth of degradation to such an extent that when our kids tell a lie or manage to extract something from someone by cheating, we consider it as a great deed and praise the child for doing that. Sometimes foolishly saying that, my dear, you have learned now, you have learned business dealings, you have become sensible and responsible and so on and so forth. We praise them for having done such immoral acts. Allah. What has gotten to us? Let's inshallah Azza wa Jal truly keep the spirit of being Hanafi and follow our Imam in our character, in our dealings, in our business, in our earning halal sustenance, inshallah Azza wa Jal, and we'll see the beauty of it in our daily lives, inshallah. Ameen. Bijahin Nabil On the contrary, we must provide madani training to our children instead of teaching them how to deceive and how to cheat people in business dealings. We must provide madani training to our children that we should not strike a bargain by cheating or lying. Such wicked actions would actually lead to a decline in our business because of a divine punishment and we will be destroyed even in the hereafter. We shall be humiliated and deserve the divine torment of Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who cheat and deceive should ponder upon this hadith of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet of Rahmah, the intercessor of the Ummah, the owner of Jannah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب ليخيه 
ma yuhibbu li nafsi that none of you will become a true mu'min a true muslim until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself allahu akbar therefore who would like to receive ruined goods or receive goods by cheating or lying who likes to consume interest or he likes bribes who wants to become poor due to his simplicity undeniably no one will like these things for himself then why do we make business plans and dealings to trap fellow muslims in such wicked actions why do we feel that it's fine if others have to incur that loss as long as i don't have to it doesn't come to me according to this hadith we must love for our fellow muslim brother what we love for ourselves and that is a sign of true iman allah akbar sayyidna abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated that the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed by a heap of grain and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam put his hand inside it to find wetness and he alaihi salam said o oh, owner of this grain what is this the man humbly said these have been wet by rainfall and the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said why did you not put the rain damaged grain on top so that people could see it whoever cheats us is not one of us allahu akbar the islamic brothers through his blessed hadith we have come to know that making any product defective is also a sin and concealing defects caused by nature is also a sin look the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarded this concealed grain to be the contaminated allah may allah azza wa jal safeguard us from telling lies and cheating in business in our dealings in our day to day life keeping in view the sharia principles that were laid out by the founder of sharia our beloved mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the noble imam of jurisprudence imam e azam abu hanifa and he practiced it throughout his life he taught his students the same values and they taught their students the same value and this is how this beautiful teaching of islam has reached us so as hanafis wake up and inshallah try to emulate this beautiful character of our imam imam e azam abu hanifa rahimahullah taala whose character alhamdulillah resembled the character of our master sayyidna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanallah the ascetism and piety of imam e azam abu hanifa rahimahullah taala was on another level it is for this reason that imam e azam abu hanifa used to guard his tongue and used to speak very little Sayyidina Sharik rahimahullah commented that Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi used to remain silent and he rahimahullah was incredibly intelligent and discerning and despite being such a glorified faqih and jurist of his time he used to avoid debates and arguments with others Subhanallah once Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi told Sayyidina Sufyan Athawri rahimahullah that alhamdulillah Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi is so passionate against backbiting that he has never heard the imam speaking ill of even his enemies Allahu akbar this should ring a bell this should really hit home to us this should really wake us up if we are guilty of doing this backbiting behind the back of others because our imam he never taught this our imam he never did this allahu akbar sayyidna dumaira rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi has narrated that there is no disagreement over the truthfulness of imam azam abu hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi and he rahimahullah would never speak ill of anybody once he rahimahullah ta'ala was told that people were using offensive language against him but even upon that he rahimahullah never spoke harshly against them allah akbar 
He rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, has stated that my patience and forbearance over foul language of people is a great favor and grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, who bestows whomsoever he wills. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Sayyidina Bukair bin Maruf rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, has stated that I have never seen anyone in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa more courteous than Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. Subhanallah, our Imam, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala would speak very less in order to develop a habit of being silent. It is beneficial to communicate by writing or gestures because one who speaks more also makes more mistakes, even revealing secrets. It is also incredibly difficult for such a talkative person to avoid sins like backbiting, carrying tales and fault finding, etc. Even the person who has a habit of talking excessively sometimes utters blasphemous words, Mahazullah. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us and grant us the privilege of observing Qufl Madina of our tongue. Good and pious company and gatherings are rare nowadays. Many good looking people are also found in worthless gossiping. If only we meet people for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And our gathering and meeting should also be according to need only, when it is necessary. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that part of the perfection of one's Islam is to leave what does not concern him. Commenting on this hadith of the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sadru Sharia Badru Tariqa Alama Maulana Mufti Amjad Ali Azmi Rahimahullah Ta'ala He has stated that one should not involve himself in futile matters and prevent his tongue, heart and organs from useless things. Ya Rab, na zarurat ke siwa kuch kabhi bolu. Allah, zaba ka ho ata kufl madina. Bak bak ki ya adat na sare hashr phasa de. Allah zaba ka ho ata kufl madina. Ameen bijahi nabi lameen. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it comes to the spirituality and the spiritual height and the state of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he rahimahullah ta'ala had such a spiritual insight. It is stated on page 396 of a renowned book called Call to Righteousness that Imam Abdul Wahab Sha'arani, Quddis Asirruhu Nurani, who has stated that once Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala was in the wudu area of the Jami Masjid in Kufa where he saw a young man performing ablution. Drops of water were falling off the wudu that he was making and were dripping from the body of that person. And Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he said to him, son, repent from disobeying your parents. The young man instantly replied, I have repented. Then seeing drops of water dripping from the limbs of another man, the Imam said to him, O oh brother, repent from adultery. And the man replied, I have repented. Thereafter seeing the drops of water dripping from the limbs of a third person, Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala said to that person, repent from drinking it intoxicants and listening to song and music. And he replied, I have repented. Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah was blessed with the powerful kashf and spiritual insight and was able to see the faults of people. He rahimahullah ta'ala made dua to Allah Azza wa Jal to remove this power and kashf from him. Allah Azza wa Jal accepted his dua and thereafter he was no longer able to see the sins of people dripping off their limbs during wuzu. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The leaders of millions of Hanafis, Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala used to see the disobedience and wrongdoings of people dripping off their limbs from the drops of wudu water. It was certainly a great miracle if Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi. However, he did not like to be aware 
of people's faults. And then he, rahimahullah, made dua in the blessed court of Allah Azza wa Jal for preventing this divine attribute from him. And Allah Azza wa Jal answered his supplication. This is a warning here for those people who make tall claims of their devotion and strong attachment to Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala but also indulging in fault findings in others. How can in, they in the same breath call themselves Hanafis and devoted to the great Imam and yet they find fault with others? It doesn't make sense. Remember that unnecessarily finding faults in others is a distinguishing and nasty habit as well as it is a sin and a haram act leading to hell. It is clearly stated in the glorious Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal states, Wala tajassasu, and do not search for faults. If we disclose the faults to others, then it is another sin. Allahu Akbar, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says about the dangers of this grave sin. In his hadith, he says, one who keeps the secret of a mu'min. It is as if he has given life to a baby girl who was buried alive. Allahu Akbar. Instead of fault finding with others, we must learn to conceal the faults of others. He mentioned in another hadith that if anyone removes a worry from a Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jal will remove one of the anxieties from him on the day of resurrection. And if anyone conceals the fault of a Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jal will conceal his faults on the day of judgment. And in the third hadith, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that the one who conceals the fault of his brother after becoming aware of it, he will be entered into Jannah. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Meri zabaan pe kufle madina lag jaye. Fuzul goi se bachta rahun sada ya rab. Kisi ki khamiya dekhe na meri aakhe aur sunay na kaan kabhi aibon ka tazkira ya rab. Ameen bijahin nabi lameen. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina wa sallam. Dear brothers, Alhamdulillah, we have been listening to the great accounts and the beautiful biography of the great Imam, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. And now we have come to a point where we, Alhamdulillah, we introduce our segment. Yes, the segment known as to succeed, you must read. Yes, and inshallah Azza wa Jal, as we always discuss, a beautiful publication of Maktabatul Madina in this segment, Alhamdulillah. Today also we are going to discuss and reveal a beautiful book of Maktabatul Madina, Inshallah Azza wa Jal, just after watching this beautiful clip and nasiha. So stay tuned with Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We should treat everyone with good manners. The beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, undoubtedly among all the Muslims, the person I love the most is whose manners are good. SubhanAllah. There's another hadith in Mubarakah. Likewise, a person humbly asked to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, what is the best thing bestowed upon man by Allah? The beloved and blessed Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said, Good manners. The blessed Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, On the judgment day, the heaviest good deed on the scale of the deeds of a Muslim will be a good manners. So what are the good manners? The mother of believers, Sayyidina Aisha Sadiqa Radiallahu Ta'ala has narrated, The beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said, Should I not tell you about good manners of the world and the hereafter. Keep relations with the one who breaks off relation with you. Bestow upon the one who deprives you and forgive the one who oppress you. The Holy Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, I have been sent for the perfection of good manners. SubhanAllah. So dear Islam mothers, we should also treat our relatives, our friends, our neighbors, our family members with good members as well.
صلو الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلو الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ماشاء اللہ سبحان اللہ یو ہیو بین لسننگ ٹو دا بیوٹیفل کلپ اینڈ نصیحہ فرام دا بلیغ اف دعوت اسلامی می اللہ عز و جل گرانٹ اس توفیق ٹو میک عمل آن دیز مدنی پرلز آمین بجاہ نبی الامین اینڈ ناؤ فائنلی وی ہیو کم ٹو ڈسکس اور بک فار ٹوڈے الحمد للہ اینڈ دا بک از اسٹیٹمنٹس آف آور پائیس پریڈیسز Yes, statements of our pious predecessors, the Madani pearls they shared with us, the beautiful insights that they shared with us, the wisdom of the nobility that they shared with us, Alhamdulillah. It is filled with those accounts and those beautiful words that can make a change and bring about a positive change in our lives, inshaAllah. And this book is available from the bookshop of Dawat Islami Maktabat al Madina. In your area, in your locality, if you have access, you can visit and you can also download it free of cost from the website of Dawat Islami, dawatislami.net, inshallah, in the PDF format. You can download it on your smartphones, on your uh, tablets, iPads, computers, laptops, inshallah, and it is supported on major devices, all major devices, yes. The statement of Sayyidina Kaab al-Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala who it is mentioned on page one of this book, it is that whoever does not express gratitude for the bounties of Allah azza wa jal and does not adopt humility, Allah azza wa jal halts his worldly benefit and opens a layer of hellfire for him. If Allah azza wa jal wills, he may forgive such a person or punish him. The second saying is that There are three things of particular esteem in the book of Allah. Whoever protects them is a true servant of Allah. And whoever lets them go to waste is his enemy. Number one, prayer. Number two, fasting. And number three, bathing to remove major impurity. After that, we get to read the statements of Sayyidina Maimun bin Mirhan rahimahullah ta'ala. He said that the worst kind of people are those who seek faults in others. Then he says that whoever wishes to know his rank in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal should ponder over his actions. His actions reflect his rank. Allah Akbar. Then he says, do not debate with scholars. Know the ignorant. If you debate with a scholar, he will withhold his knowledge from you. And if you debate with an ignorant person, he will become angry with you. SubhanAllah, such beautiful words of wisdom. Let's inshallah uh, read more and learn more. In the next saying, he says that the Quran guides those who obey it to the extent that it makes them reach paradise. It does not abandon those who abandon it. Rather, it pursues them until it makes them fall into hellfire. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then he says that the world only holds goodness for two types of people. Number one, for the repentant. And the second is those who perform good deeds to attain a high rank. O youngsters, during your youth, utilize your strength and ability in the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. And O elderly people, What are you waiting for now? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Such profound words of wisdom. Let's hear more from this noble personality. He then says that I prefer to give one dirham as charity during my life than for someone to give hundred dirham on my behalf after I die. And then he says there is no remedy for the foolishness of he who is not content with the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And after that we get to learn the statements of Sayyidina Wahb ibn Munabbih rahimahullah ta'ala. He says that the world and the hereafter are like two wives. If you please one of them, the other becomes upset. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. The example of a bad-mannered person is like an unusable broken clay pot. He then says that Satan runs away from even the shadow of a person 
who keeps his desires under his feet. And whoever seeks the world in return for an action of the hereafter, Allah turns his heart and includes his name amongst the dwellers of hellfire. It is mentioned that hardship for a believer is like a shackle on the feet of a quadruped. He then says that the one who is inflicted with difficulty has undoubtedly entered upon the path of the Prophet Subhanallah, Subhanallah. These are the great words of wisdom. In the next saying, he says that, I read in the book of a Hawari, a companion of Prophet Isa salam, that when you are afflicted with difficulty, or he said, that when you are made to travel on the path of those who are afflicted, Consider yourself fortunate as you are undoubtedly upon the path of the prophets salam, and the righteous. When you are upon the path of ease and comfort, you have undoubtedly been appointed to a path differing from that of the prophets and the righteous. And in the next saying, he says that from the children of Sayyidina Adam salam, Satan likes those who sleep and eat excessively the most. His final words, as it is mentioned in this book, that a great scholar is he whose forbearance overwhelms his desires. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I've barely read five pages and it is filled with great wisdom. So yes, get your hand on this book and start reading it and reading it inshallah from cover to cover. Yes, there is about 32 pages. I've only read barely five pages to you and we have already feeling the impact of it, the spirituality that it has, alhamdulillah, brought about within ourselves, mashallah. So yes, get uh, your hands on this book from the bookshop of Dawat Islami. You can obtain the physical copy. If not, you can obtain the digital copy in the PDF format from the website of Dawat Islami by visiting www.dawatislami.net and download it from there from your, on your smart devices or on your laptops and computers, whichever one you prefer, inshallah. Until next time, keep reciting Durood and Salam in the court of Mustafa Jani Rahmat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold. In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold. In these sacred teachings, hearts find peace and gold. In these sacred teachings, hearts find peace and gold.